Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So let me just do another quick welcome to everyone for joining us. The ISA Marketing and Sales Summit is putting on a series of webinars this year. This is, boy, I don't know, our seventh maybe. We've been uh, having a nice little streak of these on a, a variety of sales and marketing topics, obviously. Uh, today we are going to be talking about, uh, this is a webinar about webinars. I, I love that. I'll never get sick of that one. Sorry, Jeff. Um, so, <laughs> An infinity of webinars. <laughs> it is. I love it. Uh, this is brought to you by the uh, ISA Association, of course. Uh, for those of you, I'm just looking through the list. I think most of you are quite familiar. Well, hi, Nancy. Hi, Doug. Oh, I feel like the lady with the little mirror. Remember when we were kids? And I see Doug Brock, and I see Nancy Zero. Anyway, um, this is put on by the ISA Management Division, of which the Marketing and Sales Group is part. ISA has a lot of stuff going on, books, magazines, training, standards development. Um, and, um, the main conference is coming up early November. I think it's November 5th through 7th. And then there are a variety of division symposia that go on throughout the year, like the Marketing and Sales Summit. That's coming up in September. We'll be in New Orleans this year. It's the eighth annual Marketing and Sales Summit. We're very happy about that. And we are going to be at the Gorgeous W Hotel. We start things off Wednesday morning, September 11th, with a plant tour. Wednesday afternoon is a pre-conference workshop. Walt Boys from Control Magazine is going to be doing his PR uh, marketing master's workshop, which goes for three hours, so it's a really good in-depth session. And then the main conference starts Wednesday evening. We have a really cool panel that's going to be launching things. Social media during a crisis, the Boston Marathon Revisited. Um, some of you have already heard me talk about this. While the marathon um, tragedy was going on, uh, social media became the primary news outlet. And so a lot of us in the marketing field were caught in between the news cycle and our traditional marketing messages that were going out through Twitter or press releases being sent to editors, things like that. And we got um, quite a bit of pushback from people who said, listen, pause your Twitter stuff. Let us just watch the news for now. Um, we even had editors that were contacting various people from a variety of publications, including some of the, the major papers like the New York Times and Wall Street Journal, saying, please don't send me any press releases right now. Just pause for the afternoon. Let us sort through all this other mess. So the question is, what do we do? Not all the social media tools have the ability to pause. What do we do when something, a big crisis happens? And then how big a crisis is big enough for us to stop the, the flow of information coming out through the corporate stream? Um, you know, there, sadly, there are bombings, um, fairly regularly in the Middle East. What do we do in those cases? Um, what about tornadoes and when they hit? And so there's a lot of different ways to look at this issue. We have a number of social media experts that will be on the panel, and we're very pleased that we just um, got the Louisiana um, head of Health and Human Services to agree to join the panel. She has a whole different view of the world as she's looking at crises and managing information flow. So this will be a very interesting panel. That will launch the conference and then we go through Thursday and end uh, Friday afternoon about 2 o'clock. This is designed specifically for sales and marketing people in the automation industry. These are specialized topics. Uh, they are not designed for someone selling insurance or finance. So this really is targeted for, for us because there really is no other place for us to turn. So we hope you'll join us. There is an early bird uh, discount available. I think it's about $100 that's available until June 15th. You can register at the URL at the top of the page here, marketingsalesummit.com. And I encourage you to please sign up now so you can take advantage of that. All right, I am going to now stop showing my screen. I am going to turn things over. Jeff, you ready for me to give you the screen? Uh, yes. All right, I'm going to turn things over to Jeff Cawley, who, oh, wait, hold on, i got to find out. There we are. Okay. 
Uh, Jeff is the uh, one of the founders and the VP of Industry Leadership at Northwest Analytical. Jeff and I have known each other for wow a really long time <laughs> I think since I was in the data acquisition industry which goes back to maybe the 80s yes that's that's true I back think that's the, it the old scientific computing and automation conferences and things like that exactly <laughs> man that goes way back um, anyway so Jeff has been doing webinars for a very long time and doing them incredibly well he's been a very useful um, uh, repository of knowledge for us as the Marketing and Sales Summit launched our series and we thought you know what let's get Jeff to actually show us exactly how it should be done hopefully we're doing that today uh, Jeff I'm gonna turn it over to you and again as you have questions please type them into the questions area and I will moderate and get those to Jeff as soon as possible Jeff okay. welcome thanks very much Sherry uh, do you see my screen okay yep all right, very good. Well, as Sherry mentioned, this is a self-referential webinar about webinars. <laughs> but the point is, they're a useful thing. If we're going to do them, let's take the simple steps to take do them well. I just want to echo uh, Sherry's comments about the upcoming marketing and sales summits. These are always useful conferences. Uh, one thing I have found very, very nice about them is the fact that you have working professionals at the top of their game sharing information and uh, it, it, it really is, is very inspiring. It's not the usual 101 level introductory uh, discussion and that type of thing. So let me give my endorsement for what it's worth. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> okay, let's look. Uh, I've broken this out. Uh, well, as we all know in marketing, having some definite number always helps attract people so this is six steps to a successful webinar and they have served me well for the last several years first question why a webinar well one thing that uh, we can do now with webinars is supplant if not replace functions that used to require us to move our physical atoms as opposed to our virtual electrons um, here, for example, remember road shows. Uh, this is a slide from uh, one that I staged down in San Jose uh, back in 1995 when we were introducing some products. Uh, <clears throat> at that time, our uh, quality and process management stuff was widely installed in the uh, what at that time was uh, all of the disk drive industry down in uh, Silicon Gulch. Um, and this gentleman speaking was a uh, an industry expert he used to be head of manufacturing at when San, uh, IBM had its San Jose uh, activities. Nice overhead and projector. I know that's right. <laughs> this is a real flash from the past. <laughs> it uh, gives us uh, you know the whole time and place. Now these were a successful strategy in the time. Uh, however, they were incredibly uh, consuming of time, uh, logistics. Uh, not to mention the cost, and you reached oh some tens of people typically. Uh, you tried to get as many as pe people as possible, but you're working with you know can people get off work? Can they physically get there in time? And you know if you can get 50 to 100 people, you are doing very very well. And uh, but they can be fun, uh, like on this same tour. Uh, we uh, also rented uh, the conference rooms in the Queen Mary and all stayed there. It was great, but you know that's that's fun stuff. But does that necessarily advance the business case in the most economical fashion? The second thing that webinars uh, supplant or at least reinforce are professional meetings. Now, professional meetings are good things. Uh, they give you a chance to press the flesh. Uh, meet new faces, uh, form new contacts. Although one of the things, as Sherry and I have been discussing offline, is that the really big shows where you have the potential to reach very large numbers um, are in decline. Uh, I know these days uh, the only ones that I'm interested in are the smaller conferences like, for example, the Marketing and Sales Summit, which are very focused and you have a highly selected audience. So the dynamic has changed. 
again, you know, it, it uh, you miss some things like getting to travel to exotic places. Uh, <laughs> here I'm speaking at a conference in Dubai, uh, which is not you know my normal circuit. Fun, interesting, but again, is it cost and time effective? So we're looking at webinars to take some of the functions of this and actually add additional reach. For one thing, uh, that in this DVR conscious age, asynchronous communication is very important. As Sherry mentioned, uh, you put things up on YouTube or use the GoToWebinar uh, uh, replay function, and almost universally, uh, we get multiples of the live attendance to the recording over time. So it becomes an important piece of collateral, and as such, it needs to be integrated into your overall marketing plan and program. So let's look at six steps to pulling off successful webinars. First, you have to define uh, the project, uh, what it's going to be, what it's going to do. Then physically do the planning to make sure you have all the pieces and are ready to go. Thirdly, and something that is very dear to all the parts of us in marketing, is to promote the event and to get the maximum attendance and maximum awareness. Finally, you have to execute. You need to build the product one way or the other. In this case, the product is a bit of information. Then follow up, uh, very important. And finally, and one thing which I always maintain is where the a big effort is, is to repurpose. You've done a lot of work putting together this webinar. You hopefully have brought some new and interesting ideas and perspectives. Use it. Generate all sorts of collateral. Um, as I've often said in my talks, you write once and publish many. So let's look at the definition process. Clearly, you've got to identify the target market or target audience. We are not broadcasting to the millions. We are talking to the tens, the hundreds, maybe the thousands for a specific topic. In the controls and uh, automation industry, uh, like in our case, we do manufacturing intelligence and process management. There's no way we're going to excite a million people about this topic. But there are maybe several thousand people throughout the world that we want to get very excited. So we need to be able to target to that. Then it goes with defining the message. Um, and you know, use the tools that are available now. Like uh, on the screen there, I have an example of an email query we sent to a selected part of our mailing list as to this is what a series of webinars are going to be about. Uh, in this case, this was focused on uh, packaging production and use and the whole effort to uh, promote f uh, safety and quality of the product. So we picked everybody in our list who was at all related to that and sent out a query. We're going to be doing this series of webinars. What type of topics, what type of speakers would you like? Two good benefits out of that. One, you're obviously pre-promoting the event to the right people. And secondly, you get their buy-in and their involvement if they respond. Likewise, uh, one thing I use very heavily these days are LinkedIn groups to start uh, discussions. And you'll see that occur several times during this little talk because it's a very useful way to get peer-to-peer -peer activity, interest, and feedback. Uh, certainly, you need to define what kind of results. You know, define a target number of attendees, of total viewers. Uh, so you have some sort of metric that you can measure your performance against. And, like in any type of process measurement, you need to constantly be recalibrating it. Okay, you were extravagant and way out of line to think that 785 people were going to come to your last webinar. <laughs> but, all right, what is the real number so that you know? So it's a constant uh, evolution and a constant improvement. Then you've got to do the, uh, the mundane planning. You know, what are the mechanics of it? How are we, how are we going to gather people together? Well, who's going to do the creative? How are we going to deliver it? In this case, for example, we're using GoToWebinar. 
uh, who is responsible for all of the different tasks associated with making it coming off. Remember, you want this to look as seamless as possible. You want the content to be as high as quality as possible. You want a really great recording so that you have this ongoing piece of audiovisual collateral. And <laughs> the usual, our own, all of our veins, deadlines. What kind of times do we have? Now this requires some bit of structure. Um, initially, when we started doing this series back in uh, 2010, that we're now going on. <coughs> excuse me. We worked up a um, a very complex multi-level nested Excel sheet, all of the possible things that we had to do. Now this was a very good exercise because it really brought to light all the pieces that were required. Now the actuality is that what we work uh, with from each webinar to the next is a relatively simple checklist, but we've already defined everything that goes behind that checklist, each item, and make sure we get it done. I mean, checklist, terribly simple, low tech, but they are incredibly important to make sure you've got everything in place. Promotion. Well, without saying to this audience, you need to identify your most effective methods, not only for cost, but for reach, and hopefully what the conversion rate will be. In our experience, and I think in many folks, email is a number one with a bullet, as it were, for this kind of activity. Uh, the second big one, and uh, in our case, constantly growing effectiveness, is social media. As I mentioned, like in researching topics, get people bought into what you're going to present. Start the conversation earlier and follow it up. Again, you're going to have a lot of asynchronous viewing of this, so you would like to have the conversation become a continuous one. If you can do that, you have really succeeded. And thirdly is advertising. Uh, we've never gone in for heavy display type advertising for events like this. Typically, uh, haven't found it in pays. But we have found, for example, um, publications have uh, their periodic email newsletters. And of course, as time has gone on and more and more of their activity goes to uh, the web and email, that periodicity is reduced and reduced. And now, where it's daily or seemingly hourly in the case of some publishers. But these are we found to be actually very useful vehicles because uh, people are looking at those for you know, new topical information and bingo, you have your announcement in there. And typically uh, not terribly expensive, which is important. So this is the type of things that I recommend that people evaluate when they're going for their promotion. Jeff, now, if you know. if you go back one, would you be willing to share some version of that spreadsheet template uh, with the attendees? I could post that up to the blog. Uh, yeah, let me uh, clean one up, and I'd uh, be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. It looks very similar to the one I use, so that would be very useful. Um, a lot of people forget there's so many details that go into this. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there really are. And, of course, keeping the whole time frame. This is not something of, uh, you know, hey, kids, we're going to grab some lumber and a tarp and go give a show. <laughs> uh, you do need to get all these things in place. And, you know, like here, typically we start uh, the planning for each event about five weeks out. Sometimes it's going to be compressed, you know, especially if the speaker can't commit to the last minute or something, but uh, I know in our case we want at least three weeks to promote it. Oh yeah. And uh, because uh, trying to do it the last minute and get any good result, eh, it's a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You gotcha. Now, <clears throat> all of you probably saw this email, and it you responded to it. And this is a, the type of a piece that uh, 
we're talking about here. A good informative email gives you the information, a uh, big register bullet. Um, we use sort of a uh, yellowish greeny one as opposed to a blue in our current generation, but all the same idea. And this make it easy for people to register and come on down. Oops, excuse me. And then uh, I'm sure many of you people, uh, if you checked your email this morning, uh, saw that uh, Cherry, uh, Sherry sent a follow-up to everybody who was registered uh, that the webinar was going to be this day. Uh, very uh, important to keep triggering people as often as possible. And we apologize Likewise. for those who got duplicates. We did discover we hadn't removed. And that's something you might want to talk about, Jeff. So if you don't remove registrants from your list, they end up getting double hit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think, well, with our uh, marketing automation software, we can do a pretty good job of segregating that way on the fly and sending the appropriate material to people. You know, the reminder to the registrants, uh, the uh, call to register at the last minute for those who uh, have uh, held out, held back, and you know that kind of automation is useful if you have it. If not, work out a good semi-automated manual way. Uh, another one, and as I mentioned, the second biggest contributor to our registrants and attendees is using social media. Now, I personally am a very big fan of LinkedIn. I have found it to be incredibly productive over the years. Um, here is one uh, for a recent one we had when we were rolling out our new uh, enterprise manufacturing intelligence product using a webinar with uh, one of our launch customers, Dow Chemical, and uh, putting this out. This particular conversation was on the ISA group page. Uh, you see the initial announcement, uh, put a little summary later on as a comment. Uh, that helps keep it live. I'm sure you all are familiar with your periodic digest that you get from your groups. Let them do the direct, another direct email for you. Uh, and again, the virtue of these particular groups on something like LinkedIn is they are all highly targeted. The people who, like Sherry mentioned earlier in insurance, are very unlikely to join a industrial automation group. <laughs> so you have a pre-qualified group, we hope. Uh, Jeff, killer. can I uh, interrupt for just a sec? My apologies. Can you go back no a sec? We had a question. Nancy wants to know a little bit more about the CRM system you're using behind the scenes. Not everyone has a big monster one. Do you? What kind of a CRM system are you using? Um, well, we have, um, God, I'm going to blank at this moment. Um, well, we're using Salesforce, and, uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a real blank, <laughs> as to the uh, local one, it's a startup that we've been working with, uh, sort of a beta site. Um, um, It'll come to me as we go on here, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you use that in conjunction with Salesforce so the two are interacting together? Yes. Oh, Nancy is asked, is it called Sugar? No. No, okay. Uh, and and uh, I will, uh, I'm sure it'll come to me in a minute here. I just, uh, <laughs> not thinking of it at this moment. Okay. And, um, yeah, so. Uh, Anyway, as much of that stuff as you can automate, that obviously helps uh, reduce the number of loose ends, making sure that things do actually happen. Um, so the real game here is especially if you can get a discussion going. Now, that this one is in the form of an announcement. I always put the announcements up in the promotion section. And then in parallel, to try to start a discussion within the uh, discussions group. You know, ask a question that is pertinent to the upcoming webinar. Uh, the particular series we're looking at here, we are looking at establishing industry leadership, making them informative, uh, trying to set ourselves up as you know one of the leading sources of information for manufacturing operations management, manufacturing intelligence, process management, 
and related fields. This works very, very well. And you know what you want, uh, well, for example, like in that last one there for the, for the MAS the SCADA group, we ended up uh, becoming, uh, for that week, the, one of the most popular discussions. This is golden if you can do that. Because you're generating that activity, you have constant exposure, people are participating, and uh, are involved in your topic. And this is the kind of audience you want to develop. So get the discussion going. Uh, another little promotional uh, thing I have always found useful is anytime I see a, a blog or an entry that has a comment space that relates to the topic, fill in uh, your comments. Give your opinion on it and reference back to the upcoming uh, events as a uh, uh, the, to go along with uh, the topic and add to it. And you know this again helps doing it. Uh, in this particular case uh, we had not only my own post but the speaker make a post. So you get more attention and more authority. And of course you as the person presenting the webinar you're passing yourself off as the pro from Dover. The more of this you do, the more you uh, establish that role. Just don't be spammy about it and simply post info <laughs> about your webinar in all the comments places you can. We get a lot of that on LinkedIn and if you do if you do that in inappropriate places like in the main discussion forum within a LinkedIn group, you could end up getting yourself um, uh, banned from the group and if you get banned from one group on LinkedIn you end up being banned from all of them so tread lightly when it comes to blatant promotion absolutely you, I couldn't agree more Sherry you, you have to do this you know with, with these kind of webinars you're coming off as a provider of real information and real insight you are not out there to be an in-the-face peddler looking for the media closed. So the more that you can make this kind of discussion desirable information, uh, the higher the appeal is going to be. And absolutely look out spamming. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I know when I've given talks at uh, professional meetings, I try to make them substantial content and not... Uh, just an open product brochure. Always a big mistake. Jeff, um, as follow-on, Nancy asked, when you post these on LinkedIn, do you um, find the promotions tab useful or does everyone avoid it because it's obviously promotional? The useful part of it is that that will get picked up. It increases the web footprint of the event, things of that nature. Like I say, I do, you know, why not do the promotions tab and but also try to get discussions started in the discussion section. The discussion section is where your highest yield is going to be. Yeah, just don't make the discussion, we have a cool webinar coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so far I've managed to avoid being banned, so I guess I'm not being too grotesque. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you're very good about it. I'm just thinking about all the other ones I see in there. Oh, they're awful. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know. And, you know, that that's, and again, that kind of, sen be sensitive to your uh, your listener, viewer, uh, the person you want to employ. What, why do they want to spend their time coming to this webinar? Boy, it isn't just to get another sales pitch. Uh, it's to get some information they'll find to be useful. And in doing so, of course, they establish more contact with your firm, and then you can present the material. So it's the kind of thing you've got to give value up front, and keep that in mind. As uh, you know, this is not slamming your foot into the door, and to peddle the, uh, you know, the Bible or the brushes or whatever it is. Okay, um, execution. Uh, definitely, as uh, Sherry's indicated earlier, sweat the small stuff. So, uh, like at the event, for example. Remember to turn off your phone ringer. Uh, turn off your email so you don't get any uh, email enunciations uh, in the middle of it. Nothing is more frustrating when editing a, a webinar video 
to have to get the bong of, of somebody who has audio alerts for their email. Um, some people, it's, it's terribly difficult to get them to turn off their email, but you really need to do it. So uh, <clears throat> in the management, you know, you have the expert speaker. You need to make sure that they're aware of everything. They are practiced. You both have looked over the slides. Uh, you know what's going to happen. Uh, you have your facility under control. You're, you're not doing this live down on the street with an unprotected microphone, but rather in a reasonably quiet place. All of the staff are lined up. You know who is going to serve as the producer and do the recording, the announcements, and everything else. Who will be the active voice? Uh, coordinate as to how you're going to interact with each other. And so the goal, clearly, have a successful presentation for the live audience and a quality recording that you can use as later collateral. One thing, uh, and you'll notice that Sherry and I have been doing give and take here. Over the years, we have evolved from the, the straightforward lecture presentation to more of a conversation. We find that the people in the audience are much more you know, appreciative of that as opposed to sitting through and exposing themselves to another episode of PowerPoint poisoning. <laughs> and the other thing is that uh, not only is it more dynamic, it's easier on your presenter. It's much easier to get the expert to spend the time with you if, no, you don't have to repair, prepare a 50-slide deck and have a research thing of the quality of a professional white paper. We're going to have a conversation about this topic. And often you get brilliant material that way and people who are willing to participate who otherwise might be very reluctant. So while I am no Charlie Rose, I must <laughs> say it, it has it has worked. And uh, you know. And that is the whole point of Web 2.0, right? We're we're supposed to be having more conversation, feedback, back and forth. Um, and it ends up being more productive for everyone involved, like you said. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is be careful, though, when you're out there doing the social media stuff, LinkedIn or whatever, just because you see other people violating the rules and getting away with it in the short term, don't take that as a green light to do it yourself because that will tarnish your image in the long run. Oh, I can't agree more. If you cut corners and abuse people, you will pay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's sort of the golden rule of uh, interactions there. Now, very important part, and of course, all of you in the audience will be the recipient of the follow-up, is to have some sort of structured program. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the registrants and the attendees. Uh, which is a larger group, you'll have a different kind of response email, but make sure that they get that. Has the link to the recording. Of course, we thank them for their attendance. Uh, in If you're linking this with a product sales, you'll, you'll have the leads that you generated being fed to your telemarketing crew or whatever, however you're doing your direct marketing. Although not always, we frequently do a follow-up survey. Uh, it helps give feedback on what happens and ideas and contacts for next future events. Plus, again, you're keeping the conversation going. As Sherry mentioned, that's one of the goals of this. You're building conversations, you're building relationships, you're coming off as a active and a valued player within the industry. You know, that especially with the kind of business that most of us are here are in in automation, you're doing a long-term customer relationship. This isn't the one-off sale. I have to close them today before they leave the store or they're never coming back. No, you're going to be working with that customer over the months, over the years, and you have to establish a good, solid relationship. And, of course, uh, in your follow-up, it's always good to make an offer. You need some, you know, some call to action that gets them involved. Now, 
in this particular case, here is a, um, a typical type of follow-up letter, similar format to the original stuff. But again, call to action, there's the view to recording, uh, a big headline that uh, gives them the title of the uh, event they best, uh, participated in so that they have a recognition of it, and the little pitch, etc. Now, here's where rubber really hits the road for getting the maximum return out of this webinar, is the repurposing. You have um, put together a fair amount of work up front to organize this, recruit experts, organize the information, make a cogent presentation out of it, and have a quality product. Why waste all of that effort for one event? Rather, you mine that and repurpose it into any kind of media. Again, my basic tenet in life, write once, publish many. So what's going to come out of this? Well, certainly uh, screencasts or recordings. You'll be getting the notification for the recording for this event. And you can also see the other events from the Summit series. This is very good. A, it's a repository of information that people can go to and get in the habit of going to your site or your YouTube channel or however you're promoting it. And it can live on for a long time. We have webinars, uh, well like that last one you mentioned, the, uh, you saw up there, the uh, OEE and SPC one. Uh, that was uh, given almost two years ago. That still is one of our very popular uh, ones and we're constantly getting new registrations and new leads uh, from that every month really good long tail effect and that's ideally what you're aiming for is something that has really serious uh, long tails that reach out and become a, if possible a classic on the web in your particular area. Uh, following along with that of course is a source for web content for your website uh, building collateral out of it you know the, there still is a need for some print there's an awful lot of need for PDF and for uh, audio visual type of things and it's great source material for a continuous stream of social media content be it blogs, tweets, Google Plus, special interest group postings. Rich stuff. Let's use it. Um, here's a blog that uh, I came out of some comments that uh, Lloyd Colgra from uh, Dow made in that webinar earlier this spring when we rolled out the uh, uh, Enterprise uh, Manufacturing Intelligence product. He gave this little sequence in his talk of where, you know, from data to information, information comes knowledge, knowledge comes wisdom. I thought, now that is a nice little uh, packaged uh, set of thoughts that will catch people's attention. And he was uh, coupling that with uh, very much in this particular case, the evolution of our product line and how Dal had been using it over the years. So, hey, there's a nice blog entry. That again gets uh, uh, linked in uh, from LinkedIn, Google Plus, uh, all of these type of areas. And it has a life of its own. Uh, it hasn't quite reached, uh, uh, you know, Seth's blog levels, but it's still, uh, it's gotten a fair amount of attention. Um, YouTube's, uh, in this particular case, uh, this was back when we were doing a series on the food safety management systems, took uh, clips and uh, put together what's essentially a little video trailer. And that has been pumping over the years, uh, generating uh, continued interest in those webinars and the related uh, collateral. In all of these things, of course, make sure you've got a link where people can uh, go back to your site where you've got a landing page for registration uh, so you can capture their information. Uh, in this uh, particular case of YouTube, you can uh, embed uh, links um, a little bit awkwardly. Certainly always have it 
into the text in the bottom. Slide share, you can very nicely put that in. Um, slide share, which Sherry mentioned this and all the other presentations will be on, has turned out over the years to be an incredibly productive social media site for webinar content. Really recommend using it. Not only do you put the video up, you put the slide deck up. And, and uh, those links are also very important for uh, search optimization purposes. They will they count as inbound links and will increase your credibility in Google or whatever search engine's eyes. Absolutely. Very good stuff to do. And of course, as you're doing that, you know, you have the slide share up, you have the video up, you have the blog up. This can, in general, you know, create opportunities to get additional content. For example, uh, here we managed to get uh, <laughs> a little write-up of uh, the video itself and the uh, webinar and content behind it. A very good uh, uh, material to attract people's attention, and as Sherry mentions, it really kicks up the old SEO, <laughs> which we certainly want to do. And um, a uh, final slide that uh, was very nice. One thing I always try to do is contact all of the appropriate editorial uh, folks out there in a given topic and let them know about the webinar and invite them. In this particular case, uh, we had a, a discussion about uh, food safety. This is part of that earlier food safety series and traceability uh, for packaging. And is this is one of the uh, type of things you try to capture that we had two and that back to back there. There was a period when food packaging was the deadlines were approaching for people who were dealing with the Global Food Safety Initiative to have their packaging meet those standards. All the packaging people are in a last-minute panic, even though this has been coming for years, uh, because what are we going to do? So we put back-to-back -back two speakers on that, and it got incredible attendance. In fact, some of the best physical attendance we won, we ever had, because, uh, hey, it was topical, it was urgent, people did it. Well, anyway, having uh, one of the editors uh, for Packaging Digest appear, three months later, we had a nice article under her label uh, appear, a sidebar discussing how our software did the stuff, all heavy information, no uh, pushy sales about it, but very good information content, good links, SEO, and it constantly trolls for more people's attention. So I think uh, I will stop with there and uh, if we have any additional questions, let's discuss them. Um, I do have another one for you, Jeff, uh, from Nancy. Uh, she asks, what's an optimum number of attendees if you're going to allow Q&A? You know, how bad is it to not have time to answer someone's question? You know, does that make a really bad impression? If you ignore the question, absolutely. <clears throat> what we've always found useful is the end. Uh, if we're running off time, say we're going to send out, we're going to draft up responses uh, and we'll send them to everybody. And that works very well actually. People really appreciate that. Uh, or if you can't answer uh, something off the top of your head, like the mental block I'm having for our uh, your CRM. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, is a uh, Put it out there, and then it's another another contact point, another follow-up. And again, showing that you really want to have a conversation with these people, and it's not just a you know a one webinar stand, as it were. Uh, we are going out and reaching out for folk. Uh, if you're open about that, you can turn it into a positive. What's the optimal number? Hmm. You know, it really depends upon the topic. Like uh, in the whole series we did for ISA 95 and the MESA uh, models and some of the white papers on that kind of 
manufacturing automation systems, architecture. These were incredibly useful webinars for us. A lot of content came out of that and a fair number of attendees. But I would never try to say that it was the kind of attendance that goes when you have a hot topic that people are really motivated because they need to know this information now. Those, you may end up with a few tens of folks for the live event. And maybe by the time you go uh, six months down the road for the recording, you may have another 100 or 150 viewing the recording. So let's say you get 20 to 50 attending the event. Almost never have we run out of time on questions. And we try to give at least uh, a quarter of an hour. And you can always combine the stuff together. Uh, and as long as people have it in the conversation, and like we're doing now, you try to answer as you go along as we've evolved to the more conversational style. And I think people feel better about the answer at that point. Yeah, if you take questions as you go, it's easier to integrate it all in and allocate time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have run out of time before, and um, usually that's with you know the the much larger audiences, and that's tough. I I feel bad, but personally, I just keep going, and I will run over the allotted time if there are still questions left to be answered. Um, I know Jeff, you do the the nice follow up. I just keep going um, as long as people can hold on, and that way it's in the recording as well. Mm -hmm. That's true, and that's a very good tactic. Uh, I have done that on occasion, although we try to keep to the scheduled stuff. Uh, I, I won't pretend there are a few times, if, especially if there's intensity in the questioning, uh, then it's worth capturing that. Um, that, that that's that's very uh, very clear. Yeah. How about platform recommendations, Jeff? Um, obviously, we're using GoToWebinar here. Uh, do you have others that you like, recommend, don't recommend? I, I have some strong opinions on a few, but I'll let you answer it. <laughs> well, we use GoToWebinar. Uh, we have found that all in all, to be a, a good, dependable platform, it is not perfect. I have not yet found that perfect platform. Uh, we had used WebEx for a long time, but uh, we ended up with a period of uh, really bad customer service, and uh, we basically went shopping again. And that's how we got to go to webinar. I know there are some of the freebies, and I believe uh, the one that you're probably having the biggest allergic reaction to. <laughs> 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 with the uh, questionable recordings and everything else. You, you, well, you were part of one of those. Yes, it was awful. Oh, God. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there's is, nothing uh, worse than to, to give a webinar and then have the system crash or, you know, you can't hear the audio, the can't get the questions through. It's just it, everyone feels badly and, you know, your brand is definitely a bit tarnished. Oh, quite clearly. And... Uh, yeah, and like I say, GoToWebinar has been a good dependable piece. One thing I would caution folks, and this is generally true, uh, is to really look at how they record the video. Uh, with GoToWebinar, you can get it to come out into a WMV format, but it's their own peculiar codec, and a lot of editing software cannot render it. So you need to run it through um, some sort of video convert, uh, format converter to have it put the proper time base in for other codecs. But there's, that's a workaround, uh, you know, especially if you want to edit it out clips for trailers and other types of uh, video uh, collateral. Uh, you need to keep that in mind and make sure you have the right tools in place that will let you do it. That, that, that I think is probably the biggest um, limitation I've, I've seen in a webinar so far. Um, I've experimented with a number of tools through the teaching that I do at WPI and 
um, one of a, my class, one of my students is from Avaya. So we've actually been using some of their, uh, a beta of one of their new tools that's coming out that is actually pretty impressive, but that's more of an enterprise system. It's not one of these nice low cost freebie packages. Um, what do you, do you know anything about the new Adobe webinar package that's just come out? Not really. Um, I've seen some of the promo on it um, and read a little bit of the collateral, but I, I have no hands-on with it at this point. Um, and I guess mostly because at this moment we aren't shopping. <laughs> uh, that's true. You have something that works. I'm about to get it forced on me. Uh, WPI is changing over to that. And hmm. um, so I guess I'll know in another week or two <laughs> what I think of it. Well, I look forward to your uh, your experience and your comments on it. And maybe I'll do a blog rant, or maybe it'll be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you know, you would think as the subsequent generations go on, the tool makers would get better and better at it. And like one of the um, reasons why we had switched from uh, WebEx to uh, go to webinar those years ago was you know, in that period of time, they seem to have a real um, cash cow look at the product, you know, after the, after the takeover and everything else. And I hope they have changed. I don't know. I haven't checked back. But if your vendor is in that kind of mode and they aren't responding to you, it's, it's time to start looking around. Yeah, there's so many options. Don't put up with bad customer service. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you need it. Because, I mean, as you said earlier, your brand is on this event. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to, yeah, I don't want some silly software tool to be damaging my my brand. Um I want that under my complete control. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rodolfo just got here late and asked if he can get a copy of the recording. Just a reminder to everyone, I am recording this. It will go up on YouTube. I will email everyone a link to it. It will also be available on the Marketing and Sales Summit website, marketingsalessummit.com. I'll also post it to the Marketing Sales Summit uh, Facebook page. You'll see tweets about it. Um, so the recording will go onto YouTube, the slides will go onto SlideShare, just like Jeff recommended. And um, any last questions before we wrap up? Um, while people are thinking about that, I just want to remind you, please, to register before June 15th for the Marketing and Sales Summit. Uh, we have $100 off for the uh, early bird. Uh, go to marketingsalessummit.com. The registration is there. The preliminary agenda is there as well, so you can see the lineup of speakers, including uh, we just finalized the breakout sessions, um, a really interesting um, array of speakers. And uh, and as Jeff said in the beginning, um, the, this is, the Marketing and Sales Summit is not designed to be your usual 101 talks. These, um, there, there's some stuff that will be useful for people who are new to the field, but really this is for those of us who have been working in the industry and need to take our game to the next level. So lots of um, networking, lots of really good talks, um, lots of experts um, milling around, answering questions, and 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 asking questions themselves. We're all we're all learning in the same environment. It's a lot of fun and very useful. Um, thank you very much, Jeff, for your time. I really appreciate it. If you have anything additional you want to pass on, we would take a blog post from you, and we'll put that up on the blog. And I thank will you. Give you one. Hmm? Also, uh, awesome. Thank you, and. Um, we will, oh, <laughs> did you think of the CRM system name yet? <laughs> ah. Oh, my. All right, you're gonna, embarrassing. You're going to owe us a blog post just on the CRM system, all right? I, I, I will do that because it's actually turned out to be a pretty good one. Um, so it's something that you're using in conjunction with Salesforce.com. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I would like to know too. So you owe us that and then I will let everyone know and I'll post it on the blog and put it up on Facebook and Twitter and all those other places. <laughs> all right.
All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all our attendees. I appreciate your time and have a wonderful afternoon and a great weekend, which is coming up any minute now. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, Sherry. Bye-bye.